Hello teachers, my name is Brittany Roberts. I'm the face behind Math with Minis, and today I'm going to be showing you the best way to teach place value. Now, before I dive into this, this is not a video for students. This is a video for teachers. So if you're looking for an instructional video for students that walks them through what place value is, that uses money as a way to do that, as well as some engaging activities, it's five bucks. You can find that on my Teachers Pay Teachers store. I will link it down here in the video description. You can check that out if you're interested. Okay, so the best way to teach place value, what is it? Well, before we get too deeply into what is the best way to teach place value, it's really important that we as teachers understand what place value is. I think we can make the mistake sometimes because we're educators, because we are so well educated ourselves, because we've spent so many hundreds of hours in professional development and certifications and courses and trainings that we think we automatically know all of these elementary school concepts. Yet I know a lot of teachers who also simultaneously struggle and say that math is hard, I'm not a math person, ELA is it for me, social studies is it for me, but I hate math. And first, I wanna empathize with you and let you know if that's where you're at, I get it. Two years ago, that's where I was too. Give me an essay, give me any history to concept to teach. I hated math, I put it off to everyone else, I didn't wanna deal with it. But as time went on, I really found that it became kind of beautiful being able to teach students critical thinking and logic and kind of helping them see that, you know, it's not about being wrong. It's just having the incorrect answer and moving on and learning from there. And now I'm actually a STEM teacher. It's funny how quickly things can change sometimes. All that to say, I get where you're coming from if math isn't your thing, but let's make sure that we have a firm understanding of what place value is before we move on to teach that to our students. Okay, so my response when anyone asks, what is the best way to teach X, Y, Z? No matter what the question is, the answer is always going to be in a genuine, authentic way that allows them to really interact with the learning in a way that really makes meaning and makes sense to them. But sometimes, I mean, it's always hard, but sometimes that can be especially difficult, especially when they're still starting to grasp barely, barely the tip of the concept, especially when it's something as abstract as place value. Thankfully, there are some things you can do to make place value a little more concrete and easier for them to grasp if they're still struggling with it. And honestly, not even just if they're struggling with it, this is actually a really great way to introduce the concept of place value or just to get them to have a better understanding of it. So if you were doing this in person, you might hand them a place value chart PDF. I have some of those in my store. My store is called Math with Minis, if you're interested in that. But there are also so many place value charts you could find. Um, I like to use this digital one though. I actually use this in person. I will project it up on the screen of the whiteboard and I'll teach with it. But I also have students use this tool, especially when I'm in an, a hybrid or online environment. So I'm at a website called Toy Theater. They have so many amazing tools for math instruction and stuff that exists as digital manipulative, manipulatives for students, okay? So you will want to go to Teacher Tools, that is the orange button, and you see you have so many things to choose from there um, and it says virtual manipulatives or you could even just go down alphabetically to where it says place value you start with a simple place value chart ones tens hundreds thousands and so on you have place values with decimals uh, I do things a little bit differently even when I am introducing the place value concept I introduce decimals right from the get-go because even though I do believe in scaffolding, I want them to get a little preview. I want them to be introduced to decimals so that when we get into it towards the end of fourth grade or at the beginning of fifth grade, they're not completely overwhelmed by the concept. So let's go ahead and do it how I would actually do it. We'll go ahead and click on this place value chart right here where it allows you to actually manipulate things. And one thing I think it's really, really helpful help that adheres to common core standards or if you're in a state like Arizona, like myself, that basically has common core standards, but they're called something else. It's really important for students to understand that as they move left and right in the place value chart, that the value of that digit is going to be worth 10 times more or 10 times less than the same exact digit in the place to the left or right of them. Let me show you an example of what I'm saying because this can be really tricky for students to get. So right now, I'm not putting anything in the on the right-hand side of the decimal, right? I'm just talking about whole normal numbers, right? We have our ones, tens, hundreds, and thousands, right? So I might say, okay, this is five ones. I also use when I'm introducing place value, I use a lot of money. If you happen to purchase my resource that talks about place value, then you will see me actually do a mini lesson with the students using money and I have a digital 
um, I have a physical resource or I have a digital resource that you're welcome to purchase as well. But really what you're helping students understand just at the very beginning is that when we're looking at a number, every single digit within that number represents a certain amount. And how much that number represents depends on its position within the number. So this is a really good example because it's the same digit, right? And most students can understand that five tens is 10 more than 10 ones, right? I would highly recommend getting some dollar bills out and some coins if you can. So I might hold up, um, I might like, get them some money. And I know that there are also some manipulatives that do like plastic money. I like to use real money. So I might actually put 10 pennies on the table and then I might put one dime next to it to help them understand that 10 pennies equals one dime. And that even like, even let's just go down to here, right? Tens and hundreds, right? So if I have um, five dimes, that's 50 pennies, or 50, excuse me, five, five dimes is 50 pennies, right? Okay, so five dimes is 50 pennies, right? I want them to understand that. And same thing with ones, right? So like in my, in my video, I show about two tens being equal to 20 ones, right? And this is a very abstract concept. It could be really hard for the students to get it first. But once they really grasp that, especially once they grasp that, when you have the same number, the same exact digit in all of those places, that this one is worth 10 times more than this one, that this one is worth 10 times more than this one. And then the opposite is true, right? Like this is this divided by 10. This is this divided by 10. And that can be really tricky. Sometimes it's honestly even tricky for me to say. So I always go over and review these concepts before teaching anything to my students because I wanna make sure I have a firm grasp, even if I know it. Because let's be honest, this is not something that we talk or think about every day. We just inherently know it because we've built those foundational skills over time and we're adults, right? So we've been doing this for a long time, but they're just now seeing this for the first time. I really do love this site because they have a variety of manipulatives. They even have ones where you can adjust it in the place value chart and it will show you what it is in standard, expanded, and word form. And that is super helpful to students who are just being introduced to that, right? But let me also show you what this does here. So I have two in the ones place. I can click times 10 and it's going to show you what that number looks like in the place value chart if I multiply that number by 10. So let's go ahead and do that. Now I have moved the two over. So it'll help students start to understand as that same digit progresses in the place value chart, it is increasing in value times 10 as it moves to the left. If I were to click the divide by 10 button, it goes back to two ones because two ones is 20 divided by 10. And I could even cl keep clicking that if you want to introduce them to decimals or I can keep clicking on the other side so you can help them get a grasp on what those zeros mean, right? This means now I have two thousands, but I don't have any extra hundreds. I don't have any extra tens or ones. And this will take a lot of introducing. Now you don't wanna bombard them too much at the beginning. That's why I'm a big fan of mini lessons. That's why I like to keep my videos as short and as sweet as possible. But if you use manipulatives, um, I would use place value blocks. I don't have any at the moment with me. Uh, if you're doing this in person, place value blocks are also amazing tools to use. So yeah, to summarize, I would say the best way to teach any concept or any skill in any subject is to do it in an authentic way that makes meaning and makes sense to the students you're working with. So if you can relate it to anything that's relevant and current to them, if you can get them excited with an exploration or something exciting or an element of surprise, your students will learn to love math. One great way to do this, especially with a concept as abstract as place value, is with manipulatives. And so in this video, I showed you how to use some digital manipulatives. If you'd like to see some physical ones, I will be back with another video, so look out for that one soon. It might already be uploaded by the time you're watching this video. If you are looking for a mini lesson that really shows your students what place value is, walks them through how to use a manipulative like I just showed you, one that shows how to do it with money and other little things you might have around like dice and dominoes, check out the other videos on my channel and be sure to check out the link in the description to my Teachers Pay Teachers store. I have a mini lesson specifically on place value 
for upper elementary students in third to fourth grade, it will be really helpful for you. And if you're not looking for any paid resources, I have a ton of free tips, training, templates, tools, and some free resources that I just share in my Facebook group. That's facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash math with minis. I will be sure to link it in the, in the channel notes as well. And if you absolutely hate math, you still don't enjoy teaching it. You don't even like learning about it. You don't even like talking about it. You don't enjoy the PDs. I would highly encourage you to check out my podcast, Learning to Love Math. That's another awesome free resource I have for teachers like you, upper elementary teachers who are learning to love math. They want to like it. They want to be better at it so they can feel confident and competent when they're teaching math in the classroom. I'll include the link to that as well. Otherwise, I'll see you next time unless I see you around in the Facebook group or on Instagram with Math with Minis. See you next time.